Hi, we're still working on a multiple regression. Right now we're looking at a model building. Um, so what we're going to look at now is try to measure statistically the value of including uh, additional variables. We're going to look at a problem that, uh, that addresses how we can use uh, statistics, which is what we're doing, to tell whether or not, um, in a mathematical way, in a scientific way, whether it's a good idea uh, or useful to include additional variables. So the problem I'm going to look at is uh, it's chapter 16, problem 12. Um, and I'll, I'll read it first, then we'll go on from there. The Ladies Professional Golf Association, LPGA, maintains statistics on performance and earnings for members of the LPGA Tour. Year-end performance statistics for the 30 players who had the highest total earnings in LPGA Tour events for 2005 appear on the data tab below. Uh, I'll just show you the data tab quick. As you can see, we have earned player, earnings, scoring average, greens and regulation, putting average, and sand saves. Earnings is the total earnings in thousands of dollars. Scoring average is the average score for all events. Greens in regulation is a percentage of the time a player is able to hit the green in regulation. Uh, it explains that in a minute. Putting average is the average number of putts taken on greens hit in regulation. And sand saves is the percentage of time a player is able to get, quote, up and down once in a greenside sand bunker. A green is considered hit in regulation if any part of the ball is touching the putting surface. And the difference between the value of par for the hole and the number of strokes taken to hit the green is at least two. So if it's a par five and you hit the green in two or three or, or in one shot, that's green in regulation. If it's a par three, you have to get there on your first stroke. That's the basic idea. Um, looking at the data, you can see that you know we would expect, well, low scores are better. Right, low score. It's golf. Low scores are better, um, and the better better you are at hitting greens in regulation, the lower your putting average, and the better you are at saving at sand saves, the lower your score should be. Um, so we should expect greens in regulation to be positively or negatively correlated with scoring average. Same with sand saves. While well, your putting average should be positively correlated. The higher your putting average, the more putts you have to take, the higher your scoring average. Um, those are just our guesses. My guesses. Okay. Um, so we're going to estimate this model two different ways, and then we're going to test to see if there's a statistically significant difference from including more variables. Um, so the first part is to develop an estimated regression equation that can be used to predict the average score for all events given the average number of putts taken on greens hit in regulation. Oops, cancel that. I'm not trying to sort it. Uh, what I want to do is I want to underline some stuff. Right? We want to predict the average score. That means this is going to be y. And we're going to be given the average number of putts. So putting average is going to be what we're regressing first. OK, so we can go over to our data tab. Um, in order to run this regression, we're just going to need our scoring average, column C, and our putting average, column E. Go up to the data tab, click data analysis, and go down to regression. And mine's already there because I've been doing this all afternoon. Uh, let me clear these out. And you'll see what I'm doing. OK. Input y range, our y, our dependent variable, is going to be our scoring average. That's what, we, that's what we're trying to predict. Um, so I just click the top and hold Control, Shift, and press down. Got cell C1 through C31. And my x's are just going to be uh, the putting average, so E1 through E31. And I have labels selected because I, I included the labels. And my model is going to be score equals putts. I'm saying I have score on the left side and putts on the right side. Um, and I don't need any of the rest of this stuff for right now. We're not looking at uh, specification in that particular. And with residuals, we're just looking at the uh, statistics. So click OK. OK, here we have a tab. Um, and it asked us to develop an estimated regression equation. We really are going to be using the test. Is, is, uh, we're going to be using the, uh, the ANOVA table stuff. So we're going to be looking up here in a little bit. Um, but for now, to es develop the estimated regression equation, you can just say if we're just given the putting average, we're going to guess it's going to be score hat equals 46.2774 plus 14.10282 times putting average, which I'll just call putts. Your average number of putts per hole, given that you hit it in regulation, this is the relationship. Every additional putt. On average, will adds 14 to your total score, um, and these are both significant. You can the, the t f test is significant, and our p values for whenever they're both significantly different from zero. Good to know, um, but we've successfully estimated this equation. Right, we can predict given uh, given putts. Okay, part B is asking us to, to include more information. Develop an estimated regression equation that can be used to predict the average score for all events given the percentage of time. A player is able to hit the green in regulation. 
the average number of putts taken on greens hit in regulation and the percentage of time a player is able to get up and down once in a bunker. So we're predicting the average score again. Our y is the same. But now we have three x variables. We have greens in reg. It's this, right? We have number of putts and we have uh, percentage of time they're able to. Sit. We have sand save percent, right? That's what these three things are. Okay, so those are our variables. Let's go down to data. Holding control, pressing page down to get there. We're going to be trying to predict scoring average, and we're going to use all of this data. Greens and rag, putting average, and sand saves. Easy enough. Click your data analysis button. Regression should still be there. Our Ys are the same, so you don't have to change those. Oops. Uh, our Xs are going to be different, though. You're going to want greens and rag, putting average, and sand saves. I press shift, right, right. Uh, control, shift, and down will select the whole thing. We want D1 through F31. Uh, now we have a different model. We have score equals greens, putts, sand, saves. And I click OK. There we go. Now we have a new tab with scores, greens, putts, and sand, saves. And we can write our uh, estimated regression equation if we want. Scroll down so I can see the whole thing. And I have. Let me get my ink up, and we have this. Where am I? There we are. There I am. So your your predicted score, it's your average score across all events. It's going to be fifty nine point zero two. You can use more digits if you want. I, I don't have that much room. Plus, or actually minus. I'm going to erase that. Okay, plus or minus. I'm going to screw it up again. Minus 10.28 times percent greens plus 11.41 times putts minus 1.81 times percent sand saves. I'm just writing the percent here so that I remember that this is a percentage. Um, but that's our predicted equation. Okay, that's good. You know, We have two different equations. Now, part C is going to ask us to weigh these against each other. I'm going to close this. Okay, now part C is asking us, at the 0 0.05 level of significance, test whether the two independent variables added in part B, the percentage of time a player is able to hit the green in regulation, and the percentage of the time a player is able to get up and down once in a green side sandbunker, contribute significantly to the estimated regression equation developed in part A. Explain. Okay, now there's a formula for this, and I'll show you what it is quick. Our F statistic is going to look like this. We talked about this in class, or if we haven't yet, we will. Looks like this. F equals and then the equation is it's the sum of squared errors reduced okay so it's a fraction on top we have s s e reduced which is a smaller model where we only have where we have less regressors minus s s e full where we have all the regressors divided by the number of extra terms. I'm just going to write number of extra terms. Uh, you can think of that as k1 minus k2 or whatever. The different it's the difference in the number of terms between our full model and our reduced model. Okay, so it's SSE reduced minus SSE full over the number of extra terms, and then on the bottom is the MSE full. Okay, we have all this data we've generated. Now we just need to construct this 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 fraction, right? This statistic. Uh, so I need the SSE reduced, the SSE full, the number of extra terms, and the MSE full. I'm going to create a new tab where I'm going to write these things out. So I want my SSE reduced, my SSE full, my number of extra terms, my MSE full. It's going to give me a numerator and a denominator my f statistic, my p value. These are all the things I'm going to come up with. Um, and just so you know, it's always an upper tail test. OK, so my reduced model is just the score equals putts. It's the, the one on this tab right here. Um, and my SSE is going to be the this number right there. Um, I could just copy and paste that. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to press equals. And then I'm going to click on the tab, score equals putts. And then I have my uh, SSE right there, which 
which I can't get to because it's uh, under something. So move over there. Uh, it's gonna be seven, press enter, and it pops up right there. So that's my reduced sum of squared errors, my full sum of squared errors. Now I'm gonna press control page up to get there. It's the same thing as clicking on the tab. Is I pulled that right from here, it's 4.324. Okay, the number of extra terms, okay, now I, I could just count, it's greens and sand saves, but I can also do this with math, with uh, equations, so it's going to be the number of terms here, which is k, it's the, that's k right there, right, minus the number of terms in my other model, which is right here, uh, it's right here, um, so b12s contain those, so that's 2, that should be right, um, and then I have my mse full, which I can pull from the full model right here, so I'm in the MS column and the residual. That's my MSE full. Enter. And now I have all the stuff I need to construct my uh, my F statistic. So the, the numerator is going to be SSE reduced minus SSE full divided by the number of extra terms. My denominator is just my MSE full. My F statistic is this divided by this. And... Oh, I almost forgot. The degrees of freedom to get this. Let me delete this. I need degrees of freedom in the numerator degrees of freedom in the denominator. My degrees of freedom in the numerator is just going to be the number of extra terms. My degrees of freedom in the denominator is going to be the degrees of freedom from the full regression. So that that's, uh, I can get that right here. It's 26 in this case. It's n minus k minus 1 in your full model. Um, so that's 26. Now to get my p-value, I can use, I can just use uh, Excel to get that for me. It's going to be equals f dist returns the f probability distribution for two data sets. Okay, now I have my x is this, is the f statistic right there, 8.94. My degrees of freedom 1 is the numerator. My degrees of freedom 2 is the denominator. When I do this, that's my p-value, 0 0.001. So for any given alpha, really, I mean, you can't, I mean, you have to be really strict to not think that that's significant. It looks like adding greens and sand saves is statistically significantly better and improves the model a lot. So we can look at just the R squared. The adjusted R squared here is 0.364. Over here it's 0 0.594, 0 0.595. So we can kind of get a sense that it's, it's beneficial just by using an adjusted R squared comparison. But this F statistic tells us that we have a statistically significant reduction in the sum of squared errors uh, with the addition of these two extra variables. So, uh, that, so that's, that answers part C pretty much. That it, they do contribute significantly, and that's the explanation, just that you know, it appears that, um, and perhaps unsurprisingly, that the percentage of time somebody hits the green in regulation and the percentage of time uh, that they're capable of making sand saves, it's going to have a significant effect on their score, even separate from putts. So controlling for putts, that's still beneficial. All right, that's how we uh, use an F statistic to test for whether or not uh, it's a good idea to add variables. Um, stay tuned and I'll have more videos coming soon. Thanks. Bye.